Uh, we're live here. We're going to have a little chat today. Um, we've not got a name for this yet, but we thought we'd just trial something. Um, the if you don't know, we've got five instruct six instructors at WTK Edinburgh, and uh, we all come from completely different backgrounds. So I just thought, well, it might be nice for us just to have a chat about all things karate and record it at the same time. So eventually, this will be done in the coffee shop or in the pub. And we can obviously invite other club members and we'll invite guest instructors to give their thoughts. But for now, we're going to do it over Zoom and we're just going to pick a couple of topics uh, each time just to talk about. So first week, we're not going too technical. We're just going about ourselves. Just let you know who we are and what have you. So there's three of us on today. So uh, we've got Sensi Rory. You want to say hello, Rory? Hello. And Sensi Joe there as well. Hello. Good stuff. So that's and myself. Uh, uh, sen well, Sensi Jonathan, to be correct, but we'll drop the Sensi, so we're not calling each other Sensi right. today, we're all just uh, plain old Jonathan, Joe and Rory. So, uh, Rory, do you want to start us off? Just give us, uh, just give us a quick minute, just um, let us know about your history in karate. Okie dokie, will do. First, apologies for the hair. It's lockdown hair. I've not had a haircut for four months. <laughs> so, I'm beginning to resemble a Wookiee. Um, <laughs> Modelled on the t-shirt. That's it. <laughs> Now, my very first experience of karate was, I don't know if you can see that's my very first handbook. And it's from Wushu Kwan, uh, which was a Chinese full contact boxing down in London when I was working down there. And I'm not sure if you can see, but at the bottom, that's my instructor, Paddy. Uh, all doing their speciality breaks. Paddy's was to break concrete blocks with his head. <laughs> that explains a lot about my karate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I did Wushu Kwan, that was in the, the 1980s, that and then when I moved to... Huh? Is that Paddy on your t-shirt? No, no, this is Father Jack. Similar, similar sort of guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I did that for a, for a few years in the 1980s, sort of the middle to, to the late 1980s. Um, it's a full contact, very tough, to be honest. We used to sort of like have competitions with other clubs in London and uh, it could get quite extreme, to be honest. When I moved back to Scotland, we moved up to the Isle of Lewis, to Stornoway, and uh, I turned up at the local karate club there. This was in 1991. Turned up at the local karate club, um, introduced myself and said, can I train with you? And they said, I more the merrier. And that was my introduction to Shotokan. Uh, that club was run uh, by Sensei Kato, and uh, we had a, a young, two young brown belts were running the club, uh, and Kato would come up and, and uh, supervise gradings and things like that. They become Dan grades, and uh, uh, he was still, he was a big presence in the club, Sensei Kato. He was up two or three times a year doing courses and gradings, and because of the nature it was an island, he would spend like Friday through to, to Monday of the next week with us. So I got to know him very well, probably more, more so than most people get to know their sort of senior instructors because you're spending the whole weekend with him and he liked to drink and we liked to party. And so it was, it was good fun, but he was yeah, quite an tough in the <laughs> um, So that's, that's my Shotokan introduction. Um, I was back down in London after that, just for a couple of brief years. And I trained there in the KUGB, stayed with Kent Sensei Kato's organization with Sensei Karia uh, Sharad uh, for a couple of years. And I also did a bit of Wadoru where I, where I was training with a guy called Tatsuo Suzuki Sensei, who I had no idea, but he was a legend in Wadoru Karate. To me, he was just this nice Japanese guy who ran the karate club. Um, but I found out later that he was a legend. And I'm like, oh, right. He was awesome. Uh, I learned a lot from him just in terms of karate spirit. Uh, really nice guy, really welcoming, warm, but sparring, frightening. It's the only way you can describe it. Uh, and then back up to, back up to Scotland, um, began my wado here in Berwick. Um, they closed down for the summer and I was looking for some karate and I found Sensei Jonathan on the internet, uh, phoned him up and said, can I come along and train with you? And yeah, that's the end. That's, that's it. I'm, and here I am. And, and he's that's, done. Yeah, not my karate history. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Fantastic. Very nice. Uh, Joe, do you want to give us a quick, uh, quick overview of your history in karate? Yeah, no, that was awesome. Um, I'm quite similar, actually. Uh, my, my karate started as a, as a dare when I was at school. I was in my fourth year at school, and they dared me to go along to a karate uh, class one evening. And two of my, my mates were supposed to come along, and I turned up, and, and they didn't. And uh, the instructor said to me, uh, uh, are you going to train? So I, I, I didn't have the heart to say no. So I trained and, and after that first class, I got hooked. And, and that, was, um, that was about ooh, 25, 30 years ago. I was with the JKA. Um, and I spent my whole karate career in the JKA up until a couple of years ago. And I've, and I've kind of trained all over the world. I did a bit in the US, I did a bit in Switzerland. Um, I even did a bit of stint down in South Africa. But uh, I moved to London um, after I left school and after I, I left university to get a job. And uh, I went, I stayed in the, in the JKA and I went to Marshall Street, which, is the, which was the headquarters of the JKA in the UK. And it was Sensi Anoida. Um, that was his dojo. Um, and that was fierce. That was, um, you had to, actually your warm up was um, climbing 150 steps of the Marshall Street baths. It was a swimming pool basically. <laughs> his dojo was on the top floor. And your warm up was getting to the top <laughs> of these steps. <laughs> you were crawling knackered. back down at the end. You were absolutely knackered uh, getting up there. Um, uh, so yeah, and then uh, and then I kind of left and uh, did a did a number of uh, different things. I tried uh, I tried a, a bit of wadaru as well. I did a little bit of ninjutsu in my career. Um, I did a little bit of judo. I just didn't like it. I liked the traditional style, the the, the kind of the the etiquette, the basics, uh, the um, the hard training, the spirit, as you say. Uh, that was all that all resonated with me and, and it just kept me focused and, and I saw something in it uh, and I kept with it but then um, my my job took over and I kind of lost uh, touch with karate for a few years until my son uh, took it up uh, with Sensi Jonathan <clears throat> and uh, watching him for two or three years in the club just reignited my uh, eagerness to get back into it again. Never ever left me, but uh, uh, and I've been back a couple of years now training with uh, with you, John, and uh, it's just been phenomenal. I have to say, really enjoyed it, and I've rekindled all of my old relationships in the JKA, which is now in Scotland, the JKS, um, and uh, I go and train across uh, in the JKS, Hombu and Dunfermline, and just rekindled relationships that I haven't seen in twenty years. It's just just a phenomenal, phenomenal part of my life to be back in again. Yeah, that's Probably the joy of karate, isn't it? The, it is, like yeah. that, you can just pick up where you've left off. You meet people still doing what they love, and you know you you might leave it for a few years, and then you you're back there. You see them, and now you're training with your son as well, who's a couple of years, and he'll be kicking you around the dojo. I'm sure. I'm really trying to do that now. I think <laughs> <laughs> he's not far off, is he? Yeah. Uh, oh, very nice, very nice. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick bones, bones <coughs> of, uh, of my uh, my karate pass. So I, I started at Sensi Phil's club down in Langham, which I'm sure if you're watching, you probably know Sensi Phil. Um, actually started, went for a, a couple of months, and then and then gave up. Um, <laughs> so as I hear people shouting hypocrite at the uh, at the screen, but yeah, I gave up because Keon Kata was too difficult. Um, and then a year or two later. <laughs> Um, I went back because there's not that much to do in Langham. So it comes back round again. And I thought, okay, I'll give it another try. And then the rest is history. I, I trained with Sensi Phil for uh, maybe 15 years. Um, apart from a year when I studied down at Preston, I trained down there. Um, we were in a couple of organisations, both headed by Sensi Anoida, who uh, Joe uh, just uh, said he trained with down in Marshall Street. Um, and then when I was uh, 23, I, I actually um, was saving to go to uh, to Japan. I wanted to to do the thing, you know, live in yeah. Japan and what I've I saved. I booked my flights, uh, one-way flights, 
uh, and I'd been planning this for about three years, had the flights booked a year in advance, and then uh, uh, two months before uh, I was due to go, I met my uh, my wife-to-be. Um, so I, I always remind her that she scuppered my dreams, um, because by the time I went, I was love-struck, and I just went for... A, a, uh, by the time I went, I'd already decided that was I wasn't going to be there for for the, a year or two years as I wanted. You know, I wanted to to get back to my young love, so I just went for an extended holiday for six weeks. Uh, did a, did a lot of training while I was over there, but then come back and then we relocated together to the Central Bell, where I trained with uh, with Sensi Gordon Math Gordon Math in the KUGB. Did a lot of competing all over the place, and uh, so that's where I started the club. Uh, 2012 now, so that's eight years ago, uh, and we've just yeah, we've, it's been really good. Uh, we moved to the WTKO for the usual political reasons in karate, uh, a tangled web. But I think it was a good move, and uh, the fact that they're so open to us training elsewhere as well. So the likes of Joe can train with the guys over at the JKS, and and Rory's training with his Wado club down there. I think I think that's important. It's not a restrictive organisation, so. Um, yeah, and then we find ourselves here where we've got a, a good, strong club um, with a number of guys like yourselves that have, you know, that help us and keep it keep it ticking over and give it a freshness, shall we say. Um, you know, don't want it turning stagnant with just me all the time, but it's nice to have different voices in the club. Um, it's a special so yeah, club. Was... So, sorry, Rory? It's a special club. It is, it is, it is, and it's it's took a long time to get to that that thing. But uh, I think it's quite what's quite nice um, is that, uh, as I say, it was really small. It was just one, two little classes a week in 2012. Uh, but we've we've got uh, you know six six members. I think uh, we've got the twins, Callum and Lachlan, and George and Rebecca and James and Luke. All were were part of the club in that first year in 2012 um you know and they're still here today so i think that's quite nice yeah. that's uh, you yeah. know it's nice to have that as well and and a lot more guys like uh well certainly like yourself already been a lot of years training as well for most of that so it's nice yeah um so yeah that was the bones that was the bones of our karate i'm sure if we do these chats more and more which i'm hoping we'll do them at least monthly um and we'll, we'll have some of the other instructors in as well, of course. But um, I'm sure a lot more will come out from our karate past. So, uh, but we'll just, for this first week, I think we'll start with, stick with this. So, um, you know, perhaps, Rory, have you got anything, uh, you know, a story or something memorable that you can tell us from your, your past? <laughs> I'll need to censor them, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, we'll bleep it out. <laughs> I, it, I've, it's, it's been, I've had such a diverse kind of range of influences, as I say, but I've, I've been very lucky. Uh, every club I've been in um, has been genuine and real. Um, I think that, sorry, sorry, Rory, I think that can't be overstated how much luck plays a part in that for people yeah. as well. You know, the amount of cowboys and yeah. um, both in the, in the standard and, of karate, but also just in their personalities and, you know, yeah. trying to rip you off and things. And you can end up being, yeah. you know, people end up in clubs for life, you know, which are just milking them dry and teaching them yeah. nonsense. So, you know, it's good no, that been, you've, you've flute. I've it been very place. lucky. I mean, <laughs> from, from my first experience with Wushu Kwan, Paddy was a real character, a, a typical sort of uh, Irishman, loved a party, loved a laugh. But in terms of, of the training, tough, relentless, <laughs> try and kill you. But... Um, and, and that, was, that was true in Stornoway, the, the, the attitude up there. I mean, it was a very young club, when it, but it was a very old club, but the, the older sensei had retired. And so it had left just two brown belts, two fursques running the entire club. And they were really dedicated and committed to that. Um, and Kato sensei gave them a lot of help. And, and as they, you know, once they got, it's funny, once you get this Dan Greg, suddenly this wall. It, it kind of flowered. They flowered. Um, uh, but, yeah, Kato Sensei gave a lot of effort to that club, bringing that along. So, again, it was very real. And, and the training was tough. We used to train Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursday, Friday. And mm. two hours a night. It was, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was fun. Knackering, but fun. Um, and, and Sensei Kato coming up for the weekends. We would go, we would spend the weekends 
two or three times a year, we'd go across to a place called Uig, or Reef, and the west coast of the Isle of Lewis. Very deserted, very out of the way place. Get a minibus and go out there. Just, just uh, the adults and a few of the kids. And, and Kata, since they would, uh, it was like a gashuku really in a way. And we go down on the beach. We go down on the beach and, and train in the waves and all the rest of it. And then in the evening, get the kids off to bed in the bunkhouse and we'd all get slaughtered. <laughs> uh, I'm not supposed, I suppose that's not really how it's supposed to go, but, but we had a, a great, we used to have parties, a great fun. And then at five in the morning, Kato says he's kicking you awake in your sleeping bag. Oh, we training, we training. Oh, God. <laughs> And it was, the training would start with like a five mile run around the area and then training on the beach and people running off to be sick behind the dunes because they were still hung over. And it was, <laughs> it was that kind of club. Again, it was a very real, very, it was fun. We were, it was like a, almost like a family. And I think that's, that's similar to our club. It's the same kind of atmosphere. We're, we're mates, we're, we train hard together. And there's a, there's a kind of a, a, a kind of gel together. Uh, and it's funny, it's that's, funny, quite, funny. that's quite special. It's funny you mention that. Just uh, <clears throat> obviously, as I say, the club's eight years old. I, I, I'm, I've been pondering when we go for the 10 year celebrations in, in two years. I was thinking a, a long weekend somewhere in Scotland. Uh -huh. like, uh -huh. You say, I guess you could do it on the beach, you know, uh, the beers and then the 5 a.m. training. So, uh, yeah. we'll, you know, once we get into, get into next year, we'll start planning that. Um, you know, I think that could be a pretty, uh, pretty fun thing to do somewhere. That's, that's my lasting memory is those weekends with, with Kato Sensei up there and, and really hard training and then a really hard uh, session in the evening after the training and then up again <laughs> at five o'clock to do more training, you know. And that's when he wasn't fishing. He loved fishing. He would disappear and we would be like, where's Sensei? And then some, some crofter would bring him back in a Land Rover, found this guy fishing on one of the locks. He would just take his fishing gear and away to go fishing. Um, <laughs> loved it. Um, see, he's such a character. We, we would be in like Stornoway, and there's, there's a bar called the Clacken, where all the fishermen used to go. And it was like, pick a window, you're leaving in the Clacken at times. Um, uh, um, he would always say, when we were there, we go drinking. After, after a grade, he we go for a drink. No, Santa, we'll, we'll, just go, we'll just go to the Cali Hotel. No, 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 no. We go that one. And we're like, well, that's a really bad bar. I'm not scared. <laughs> and I remember yeah, having all this, oh, we had all these different fishermen lined up on the bar because he'd been demonstrating mawashi gearing to us. And the fishermen were like, what's that? Oh, it's, it's a gratty. All right. So he had these fishermen lined up along the bar, practicing mawashi gearing over the top of the bar. Absolutely <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Oh, great stuff! Oh, very I, nice. Yeah. I definitely, re I definitely resonate with with that. Um, maybe not to the to the same extent, but, but I do think Shotokan is that traditional style of karate, mm -hmm. isn't it? And, and and if if you if you if you're lucky enough to have gone through those types of sessions with those senior characters, so to speak, um, it, it does build. It builds confidence and it kind of gives you a grounding that I don't think you can get just by turning up to a dojo in a club, uh, church hall or something like that once or twice a week. Uh, you know, those kind of uh, take your tops off and and uh, train train like that or train in the water. Or I mean, I, I've, I've got um, a couple of old stories where you, you, we won't train outside. Uh, we won't train in the club. We'll go and train out in the, in the football field you know, uh, and in the sun and, and just feel the air around you and, and just get a different perspective of life. Um, but the other thing to kind of add to it also is uh, one of my memories is, um, is my gradings. Um, I used to go into my gradings absolutely terrified. It didn't matter if it was my first grading or my black belt grading or anything in between. I'd always be so nervous to the point of, of being physically sick. Uh, I never was, but it felt like I, I would be. Uh, yeah. and, the reason, and, and the reason for that was because, um, I mean, you said something earlier on. Um, so and I was lucky, and I didn't realize it at the time, it was many years later that I realized this. All of my gradings were under Onoida Sensei. 
not not one of my gradings was with um, anybody in my association, any of the instructors. Um, and so you had this kind of senior eighth dan Japanese instructor who was old school, and he used to come in, and we used to have these massive halls that we would do our grading, and he used to come in, and everybody would just kind of go silent, give him pay him the respect, and I'd think to myself, well, who is this guy? You know, why is it? Why is everybody paying him this respect? And he'd go up to this kind of solid brick wall, right, and he would just he would just stand there punching this wall while everybody else was <laughs> training, right? But the whole building would be shaken practically because he'd be just punching so hard. Um, but it looked effortless. And, then, and, and, and you don't realize that until, you know, 10 years later, do you, were you under the kind of the masters, the great, the great and the good? Um, yeah. on that. For me, I think uh, uh, I joined, I joined his, I mean, he passed away a few years ago and I joined um, a, a Facebook page uh, that commemorates him. Um, and actually the entry um, criteria to join this um, Facebook page was you had to have known him, trained with him, um, and um, and you had to prove it. Uh, so my way of proving it was I, I had to photograph my uh, my, my grading um, book with his signature on every single page. Um, I also photographed my um, my membership for Marshall Street. So for the three years, I had a kind of my own membership card and I had to show them that. Um, and I had to also give a story um, that people would recognize. And the story I gave was um, every now and again in Marshall Street, he'd invite you um, to go out and, and drink with him. And uh, there was a local pub just around the corner. And uh, he literally, you'd go in there, uh, would have, would have beer and crisps, or, or in his case, he'd have whiskey because he was a whiskey drinker. And then you just got to know the man not not the sensei yeah. uh, so i managed to get into this facebook page and you look at it there's only 150 people on this worldwide facebook page that have kind of sort of signed up to it and it's just just respect to uh to to, to the greatness and to the cause it's just a, a lovely uh lovely thing to kind of remember yeah you say some some reputation sense you know or, or some impact shall we say on british karate anyway you know he was he, he led that many organizations and and everyone in between really he was he was the main sort of japanese pioneer wasn't he for 30 40 years but what, um, but, but what i do like though is that all of the wtko um members in scotland uh, instructors in scotland have kind of trained have come from that background and so mm -hmm. there is a there's a commonality which yeah. is why you know which is which is, which is why I've stayed, which is why my son has stayed, because I can see, I don't need to go to the JKS or even the JKA, which still exists up here in, in, in some shape or form, um, because WTKO has got that, that foundation. Yeah, the of, same lineage, yeah. The same lineage, yeah. And um, it just shows um, with the other senior instructors across the WTKO in Scotland. It's, it's just phenomenal to, to kind of resonate with that type of training. Yeah, certainly uh, Sensi Phil and Sensi Eddie spent a lot of time with Sensi Noida when he was up, probably similar to you, you know, when you're going out for the drinks and what have you. Um, yeah, they, they spent a lot of time with him. He, he, he passed away, I think it was 2003 he passed away, <coughs> yeah. it was, um, the day after my birthday, uh, if I remember rightly. But I, I was still a pop, I was, uh, I mean, I just turned uh, 14 or something, 15 or something around there, well, yeah. I, should, I could do the maths, but I'm not going to, but yeah, about 15 or something. Now, yeah, <laughs> I'm making you feel old. Yeah, I was, I was 16. You know, just turned 16 the day before, I believe. Um, yeah, that was uh, that was nice. Since you know, I'm sure there'll be plenty more as we do more of these. There'll be plenty more um, uh, tales uh, about the likes of Sensei Noida and Sensei Kato, who also passed away recently as well, didn't he? Uh, Rory, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. They, sadly, the the the, um, the great thing I found is. There's this kind of a worldwide kind of family in karate. Um, with, with Sensei Kato, when he passed away, I, they had a, the, an online funeral and all that. So I, I was able to sort of be at the funeral, if you like, online and all the rest of it, as were a lot of his students from around the world. And now they've all become Facebook friends. You know, it, it's kind of, um, 
guys that I've, I've never heard of, but because we've had that commonality of both training with him, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, well, you're in the same club then, you know, and it, sharing, sharing reminiscences and all of this. And uh, some of them I'm looking at and I think, my God, this guy's something like an eighth Dan or something, you know, and he's on my Facebook frame, you know. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, and they all have this, this, um, this lineage through Sensei Asai as well. And you can see it with Sensei Amos and the way that he moves and the way the WTKO senior instructors move is Asai Karate very, very strongly. And, and a lot of the, when I look back at the, what Kato Sensei taught us, that is too, you can see the lineage is from Asai Sensei in the way that they move. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of these, a lot of these guys, um, that I'm now friends with on Facebook and they're sharing videos of themselves training. I'm thinking, yeah, that's Asai as well. You can see this kind of the, the Asai lineage running right through it all, you know. We, yeah, we, that's what fun. I love about Karate. We're like a big family. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. it. And whenever you go on holiday or you just go somewhere, you know, whenever I'm traveling anywhere, I always think, oh, should we just throw the gi in the bag? And, you know, and you'll, you'll always find yeah. someone somewhere. Yeah. So it's always quite nice doing it that way. Um, I'll just tell you a quick tale from mine and uh, just briefly. Um, so we, we went to the Langham Karate Club, went on a little trip uh, in 2000 and uh, was, why do I keep attempting to work out the dates? I was 19 at the time, so it was 14 years ago. Uh, and Sensi Phil, Sensi Sharon and Sensi George and Sensi Eddie and Rona were all on, on the trip as well. Uh, you know, so that's how, you know, we go back that far, even though our paths deviated in between, it's nice for us all to be back in the same organisation. Um, but we were in uh, Japan and we trained at the club and then we were having a few beers after training and myself and there was a, a friend of mine, same age as me, were, tri- were uh, the young and, you know, cocky young ones and we were having a few drinks with their young book, you know, uh, and this guy had just won, I think it was the, the All Japan Under-21 Championships for his Kumite. Um, so after a few beers, we, we challenged them. Uh, we challenged him to a, <laughs> to a match, a Japan versus Scotland match. Um, so um, he wrote down the details for the, like a few days later. He says, okay, you come and train with us at the university um, a few days later. So we went, it was myself and, and my friend and Sensi George and two of the other guys that were on. So five of us went and, oh, that was tough training. That was 12, 12 till three in the, in the heat, the heat of the day. Um, real brutal session. Um, uh, but two things, two things I remember about that. The first one was after the session when we were so tired. Um, all I, I remember through the session, they just kept saying, no stop to us. That, that was the only English they sort of communicated to us. No stop. You know, you were like, I'll just do, Hit in the bag. I'll just, you know, when you hit about 30, 40, 50, and then you stop for a quick breath, you know, no, 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 no stop. No stop. <laughs> um, but then we got to the end, and <clears> then he, we thought, oh, well, <laughs> that was great, but thank God that's over. And then they, they said, no, match. So I got up first and fought the first guy, um, and they played, the they fought to nine Wazari, uh, nine points at the time. And I, I stuck a Yakuzuki in and went 1-0 one, one up, thinking, OK, here we go, here we go. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, a couple of minutes later, it was 9-1, and I was sat down. Um, and it was a similar story with all the other guys, and then absolutely wiped out. And then the other ones had fought their other guys, and then they pointed back to me again uh, to get up and fight another one of them. So we did this, we rotated around the... the uh, well, it was the three of us, because two of them were a bit young. The three of us, just every member of their club <laughs> ended up fighting over and over. And it was 9-1 was the best score I got. Um, <laughs> lost everyone, of course. Um, and the other thing I remember about that training session, they trained to music as well. And they had such a limited playlist. They had about six songs on this playlist, and it looped round and round and round. And it was like five J-pop songs, and the Backstreet Boys... I want it that way. Um, so every 20 minutes or so, this Backstreet Boys song would come on just uh, uh, over and over and over again. It was like sort of a form of, you know, like water torture just drip, dripping into your, into your mind. So uh, whenever I hear that song now, that Backstreet Boys song, it, uh, it gives me nightmares. It was, uh, 
<laughs> it was a really odd, really odd choice of song to be training to. That's quite, and it's quite funny, actually, you say that they, um, they didn't speak good English, but they, they, they did also have another phrase. So, so what do you think was this, the other phrase that they always said? So it was no stop was one. What's the other one? <laughs> I don't know. Give us a clue. <laughs> one more. One more. One more. One more. One more. <laughs> and one more was never one more. It was like one hundred more. <laughs> one more. <laughs> that is like that's one the, the biggest, the most universal lie in karate. That isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> one more. Just one more. Oh, brilliant. So I'm sure we'll have plenty more tales as the weeks go on, but we don't want to go on too long. Um, you know, but just very briefly, just because of the situation where we are, we're in mm -hmm. lockdown. This has been 12 weeks or so we're, we've been in. And hopefully there's green shoots in the next couple of weeks. We might be able to start doing some outdoor classes. But uh, just, uh, just uh, Rory, how have you been finding this time, you know, in terms of your karate? It was lovely when the weather was nice. I was able to get out on my decking in the garden. I've got my makiwara, so I was able to do that. That was that was good. It's not so nice in in the damp and the wet and the wind and the cold and the winter like it seems to have become. Um, so yeah, I've been I've been doing the the classes that we do in the Zoom class on a Sunday. Um, I try and keep myself fit as well. I try and do a bit on myself. Inside the house, it's more awkward. I've got the dogs under my feet, and when I can go out and lock myself out in the garden, and the weather's nice, that's ideal. I can be out there for a couple of hours practicing kata. Um, that's what I like to do. Kata, I love. I just love kata. Um, in a way that was the, the, the first kind of wet my taste buds for, for martial arts was watching a, a program on television I, I mean I always loved Bruce Lee in that watching a television program and it was, it was about these, these monks in China in this little monastery practicing martial arts and meditating all that. and this guy just comes out from, from meditating in, in the, the meditation room in the temple and he's standing in this beautiful sort of garden with all willow trees and that around it and then he just flowed into a into a form which I think is some kind of tiger tiger fist form and it was beautiful and I remember watching that thinking I want to do that and to me that's I think Catalan has always been because yeah it's I don't know there's something special about it I watched that guy do that and I thought wow I'd want to I want to be able to do that and and so to me Catalan is yeah I love Catalan so that's what I do. I'm training in the garden. It's kata. Um, inside the, the, the house, I'll be practicing dances. Uh, <clears throat> well, that's, uh, I'm just saying that that's been this, the silver lining of this period is we've, you know, those that are keen to train have been able to, you know, really just focus internally on themselves and, and their own, particularly kata, of course. Uh, you know, and I've, I've quite enjoyed running through, um, you know, things on my own. Obviously, you miss the, the club mates and, uh, you know, miss punching people, uh, <laughs> of course, but uh, that's the big one. But uh, I, I don't know, I mean, I've kind of enjoyed it. A lot of these Facebook classes, obviously, I've been doing um, sort of from a teaching point of view, but I've just been training. Um, so it's been quite nice in, in that respect. I've not been having, I've not been turning up to class saying, okay, I'm going to train tonight. And then 10 minutes in, something catches my eye and I can't drop it, you know, and I end up sort of teaching the whole class and then I leave and go home and I think, I wanted to do, I wanted to work a bit myself tonight, but I never, because I got distracted, you know, whereas at the minute, there's been none of that. Um, I've just, you know, it's just me and the camera. So it's been quite nice in that respect. Um, but, you know, it's, it is wearing a little bit thin. <laughs> I think, I think that's uh, maybe fair to say. Well, I'm definitely that's ready. It's Ready that camaraderie. It's that, that sort of like all working together and helping each other. And it's just something, it's, there's an atmosphere about a karate dojo. Um, yeah. How about you, John? Um, yeah, I, I, I've kind of gone through a bit of an epiphany, actually. Um, so I spend my whole working day on, on Zoom and Microsoft Teams and, and doing these types of things with my, with my colleagues and clients. So I'm quite used to being on, you know, on, on the video and, and, and that kind of stuff. But when... Um, when we first went into lockdown and, and we started doing these Zoom sessions, I, I just couldn't get my head around it. I said, I'm not going to do a Zoom, karate Zoom session. I mean, how, you, how is that going to work? And I couldn't get my head around it. But then after a couple of weeks, I was missing karate. So I, was, I started, I think I said to you, Jonathan, I'm going to watch a couple for this uh, before, I, uh, before, I, before I kind of engage. And, and, um, 
but since I've since then I've just engaged in every single one of them. I think it's great because and it's great for two reasons. One is it keeps you in contact with your colleagues, your your your, your karate colleagues, um, but it also keeps the mind fresh with respect to because you can forget kata and you can forget your stances and you can forget your fitness and all, and all this kind of stuff. So it's been good that way, and I've been watching John Mullen. Sensei John Mullen's uh, uh, classes, because um, actually it's been it's actually quite a good time in the evening um, when he goes live. Um, I haven't uh, seen, I haven't managed to get on on to Sensei Richard Amos's ones, but because um, the timing is different. But uh, Sensei John Mullen's, and he's gone right back to to basics. And I can see Sensei Phil watching. I can see Sensei Sharon watching it, and um, it, it's it's all great. But actually, the most interesting thing for me was. Um, my colleagues across the JKS, they did a Q um, grade grading um, two weekends ago. Uh, six people uh, <clears throat> on, um, graded. Now, it's just juniors, yeah? And, and do you know what? My first impression of that was they're just doing that um, to kind of keep, keep the commercial side going, yeah? But then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, actually, no, what it's doing is it's keeping... It's keeping the karate community connected, engaged, yeah, and people are still progressing. Now, it's never going to be the same. They all want to go back into the dojo. But actually, the, you, worldwide, people are just jumping on, whether it's aerobics or fitness or karate or cycling. Worldwide, everybody's now using this medium to continue to do the thing that they love in the sport and sporting world. And I just think that's phenomenal. And I'm... And, Actually, I, I take my hat off to you, Jonathan, for being um, persistent um, on, on this one, because if you weren't persistent on it, then none of us would be al along here with you. But you should, yeah. so you, should consider, you should consider kind of sharing some of the, so you don't knock yourself out, <clears throat> you should consider sharing some of the... Uh, the yeah. It's quite nice. I mean, that's why I did them short. I wanted them short. You know, I thought, a blast. You know, keep even the young one's attention. Um, but I mean, like you're saying, it's been, I think about half, we've, we've got about 60 odd members, I think on the books and about half have engaged in the classes in some shape or form, which, yeah. which is great. You know, you've got to assume that at least that half will be wanting to get back in the dojo with us. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, <laughs> and the other half, for whatever reason, you know, they might be shy or they might not have the technology or it doesn't fit the times or what have you. So, you know, we'll just, Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, and we can start dragging them back in. <laughs> um, but we, um, you know, I think after next week, we can do some outdoor classes. I yeah. think that's what the signs are. Probably limited numbers. Um, I've already tapped up the scout hall um, on Mon Mon where we train on Mondays, uh, and they'll be open to us doing it on the, the lawn outside there. And then I'll probably do some at Kurt Liston here, out the back of the sports centre, as a starting point while still doing some Facebook ones. Um, th there's also, I think the interesting thing is once this is all over, um, you know, I may consider, may consider doing one, one of these a week as, as, as a, a thing to offer members as an extra um, to train from home. Uh, you know, not, not to replace any classes, but just as an extra thing for the members that are training regularly to do a blast, I think. Maybe people that are um, coming back from injury don't really want to get to the dojo. They, you know, I don't know. It might just be an idea, you know. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to invest in slightly better technology and things, make it look a bit better and things. But, it's, <laughs> it's you know, I think this time has made you realise, like you said, it's not, it's not the death of karate doing it over this. You know, it's not ideal, but we, we, we change, we evolve, you know, and we've, we've managed to keep the community going so you know it yeah. might be worth uh, tapping into just as an extra string to our bow when even when we come out the other side of this you know a little fitness class once a week a little 30 minute blast in the morning or something i don't know it yeah, might be something you know worth doing i i've enjoyed them i've enjoyed them and i've got to say jonathan um how you do it every <laughs> every every session I, that was that was way out of my comfort zone. That one that I did, I was like, "Whoa, you're just talking into a phone, and you know." <laughs> so it's, you probably, if yeah, you look back, the first three or four that I did, it probably looked like you know the the shy kid at a school nativity play, 
you know, I was, I was shuffling around and thinking what's going on. And then I just got, uh, the fame got came, got to my head and now I'm just like that. As soon as the camera comes on, I've kind of lost my marbles a little bit during the lockdown. I'm like, oh, here's my company, this company, you know. I'll just talk, I'll talk about anything, you know. Um, and it's, you know, Scotland's like Joe Jesse said. Encamp. Yeah, exactly. I'll put the accent on. Hey, karate guys. <laughs> oh, like that. <laughs> yeah. Check but, it out. <laughs> <laughs> but like Joe was saying, you know, I've never really done any of this before in any form, you know, but he's saying, you know, you do get used to communicating over this medium and, and it's been the same with the training. You know, we have a, a found a groove in some shape or form. So, yeah, long, well, not long may this continue, but long, long may the... Uh, Long may our training continue in whatever form it takes. Oh, oh. What's, well, what, what do you reckon? Should we leave it at that, guys? That's been about, well, it's been best part of 40 minutes. We said half an hour, yeah. but, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah that was, I quite enjoyed that. So we'll, that um, good fun. yeah, yeah. Well, thanks very much, guys. Yeah, so um, th those, those that are watching, um, you know, we're, we're thinking of doing this quite mm -hmm. semi-regularly. Rory and Joe are, are, are keen to do it. Uh, Alan's, they're definitely keen and we might drag the other ones in as well uh, uh, but certainly you know we want to do this and maybe even hit some of the heavy the deep karate topics as well you know mixed in with things like this our personal experiences and just what we think and you know we might end up doing live ones eventually people can ask questions and we'll drag some club members in and you know put some lower grades you know find out you know, hopefully it could be a good tool for us to, to, you know, get to know each other and just talk about what we enjoy a little bit, you know, talk yeah. about our pack. Nice yeah. just to, to, to blather. I enjoy good blather. Have a good yeah. yeah. Right, well, great. Should we call it a day, then, guys? So, uh, yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah. Enjoy well, your so weekend, you enjoy guys. Your... Yeah, enjoy your weekend. Yeah, thank you very much. And I'll just hit the record there. Thanks, folks. Have a good weekend. Thanks. We'll, uh, We'll get this edited and we'll get this up shortly. I'll see you later, folks. Cheers.